and here we are on a Lincolnshire evening to find out if the Minolta Dimage A2 can still take photographs in 2020. The Konica Minolta Dimage A2, known hereafter simply as the A2, was released in February 2004 carrying an 8 megapixel 2 thirds of an inch CCD sensor and a 28 to 200 mm lens in 35 mm equivalency. Minolta has long since ceased making cameras having sold its operation to Sony in 2006. Sony are making great cameras today, so how is the old tech in the A2 going to hold up in 2020? For 2004 the A2 had a surprisingly big EVF boasting nearly a million pixels at 640x480. By today's standard it's pretty garbage though and I'm not sure if it was this sample that was faulty or whether it's just how these were but in bright light there's all kinds of weirdness going on with strange lines and breakup interfering with the images you're trying to take. Something that isn't present on the back of the screen. Generally though, the handling of the camera is great and is very easy to work with. There are features on the A2 I wish were on more cameras of today. One of the greatest controls on the whole camera is the settings dial on the side which allows you to very quickly change things like white balance, ISO, drive and a host of other things all in one place, rather than having to search for different buttons. It even has a custom setting available, just dial in, press and change. The 28-200mm lens, a 7x zoom, has a killer feature too. It's controllable simply by using your hands. None of this power zoom nonsense to go wrong or take years to go from wide to telly. It's not a fixed aperture lens, but you won't be complaining too much as even at the long end we're still getting f3.5. Those who have suffered with power zooms will understand why this is so great. Behind this is the manual focus ring which is electronic, allowing the autofocus to be overridden, a feature missing on many a modern lens. I rarely found I needed to use this function though as most of the time the autofocus snapped in quickly, surprisingly quickly in fact. If you were able to keep up with the pace with the EVF or the back screen, sport shooting wouldn't be out of the question, it wouldn't be the autofocus holding you back here. Where things fall down, as with most of the cameras that I look at on this channel, and given the camera's age, it's not going to surprise anybody that the ISO range is a bit limited on the A2, going from 64 to 800 ISO. With the bright lens aperture, this isn't much of a problem for daytime photography, but I wouldn't want to use this one in a coal mine. Colour noise does become visible at ISO 200 and it's there if you look in the shadows or blue tones even at its lowest settings. I'd minimise or turn any in-camera noise reduction off in-camera and deal with this in post if needed. And along with the ISO limits, dynamic range will also impact on your shots. Without bracketing you will hit the hard limits of the camera, especially using JPEGs. For those people with plenty of time on their hands, the camera does support proprietary roar and tiffs, and compatibility doesn't present a problem in Lightroom. The time between shots will be reaching 10 seconds or more as writing to the CF card is pretty slow. Thankfully CF cards are still readily available today so there's no need to worry about memory card formats, something that can be a bugbear of old digital cameras. Video users will also be pleased to know that the A2 supports that option. But yeah, you're probably not going to want to use it. It's not high resolution and the quality is... Well, let's just be kind and say mediocre. When things come together nicely, the A2 produces some lovely shots. I'm not completely convinced the colour balance is perfect as many of the sunset shots slanted slightly towards the red end of the spectrum. Shooting mostly JPEGs due to the cycle times, it meant having to be a little bit careful with exposures. I didn't have a big problem using aperture priority, which I usually shoot with, but I did find myself dipping into the manual modes more often with the A2 when I wanted a bit more control. 
Fortunately, the AT makes this pretty easy to do. I certainly walked away happy with more of the shots than I thought I would based on what I saw on the back of the camera. So did the A2 stand up to scrutiny in 2020? I would say yes, the A2 still holds up well given the limitations of the 2004 technology, and it was definitely a fun camera to play with. It's one that I'm happy to keep in the collection.